Hey everyone, looks like we are live for an impromptu afternoon live stream. So basically what I'm doing today is refining the underpainting. This is going to be uh, after this underpainting is done, which is later today. I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of clear shellac on it. And then I'm going to come in with Createx, the lifeline for her skin tone, and then the Wicked paint for, for the background. So there's a lot of plans. It's very pragmatic in my approach. And together you'll see my thinking on how I actually refine a underpainting. In the underpainting, I'm making a lot of decisions that's going to keep me from having too many decisions when I'm coming in with color. A lot of artists might feel that an underpainting is redundant, but I feel that if we solve problem A, and then when we go to step C, we don't have to worry about problem A. And I'm not really getting into uh, things like value, because value is something you're going to handle more in the color stage. But where the underpainting really shines is when we are working on things like uh, edges, uh, you know, uh, a value of light next to dark, sort of the tonal fabric, and also a lot of the drawing. You don't want to be drawing with with paint you want to you want to draw with a pencil you want to come in with uh, a tone a monochromatic tone to worry about edges and maybe larger value patterns that are kind of working on a design of your painting so that's basically what i mean so here we can see right now we have this tree and this tree has to come forward and it comes forward in the photo so now i'm going to solve the problem of bringing that tree forward so i'm going to use just a regular piece of paper as my freehand shield because i want to go ahead and hit this a little bit darker however i don't want any overspray going on to the snow right so that's the kind of thinking involved that you can pretty much take care of many of the tonal issues and you see how all of a sudden I'm bringing that tree forward and that's that's basically the thinking one of the things when you are airbrushing and you're doing something like this you don't want to go parallel if you do you're going to have overspray and you're going to create a line of value onto her fingers and it's not the end of the world but it just means one more thing that you have to correct so so i'm going to accentuate the dark of that tree and you see how by accentuating the dark of that tree i immediately bring that tree forward right so and then if I want a real dark area, I have some, some control with the airbrush and I could go ahead and bring that forward by maybe darkening the very edge, the very contour of that tree. Up here in the background, I can actually darken that background. A lot of times the, the forms are described more by the forms next to it than the form itself. So as we come up here, if I come in and darken these background trees, which are very much out of focus, I can go a long way in really giving a feeling of her being in this winter landscape. I want to describe the contour of her face. And you see how it's really described here uh, in, in a zygomatic bone, right? But then as it comes down here to the apicularis oris, the values are very close. So I don't like that. I want to bring things forward that I want to bring forward and push things back that I want to push back. So I do have these freehand stencils that I did make. 
and what I want to do is to cover her face so I can hit that background, accentuate uh, the contour of her orbicularis oris by her mouth. So let's see. So I'm looking for that particular freehand shield. And here we go. So we're going to put this there. I'm going to put some light on the subject. And then we'll kind of bring this over. So it's very, very important to, to handle your business in the underpainting. You have to. And then you could handle your business more clearly when you are actually uh, going in with color. And when you're in color, you know, it's like many layers of color. Though I do have a new color theory, which I'm working on, and I'm going to have an online course where you could mix every color every time and almost flawlessly. And I say almost flawlessly because we're humans and we're always going to make mistakes, but I would say probably 90% you're going to hit that within five minutes. Actually, within one or two tries, you know, you're going to hit that actual color. So that's something that I'm working on. Um, but it is going to be an online course. And it's just a whole different way of looking at color. And I've been doing that in the oil painting that I've been working on, you know. So let's see here. I'm going to darken the background, which is right here. And let me see. Um, okay, so let me just darken this background here. And... So you see how right here I'm kind of bringing out that edge. But if I didn't have this freehand shield here, I wouldn't be able to actually get that edge. So I'm making a design decision. As an interior designer or a fashion designer, it's the same. You're making decisions to create, uh, create a, a tonal framework and how the painting looks from across the room or across the gallery. That's how you do it. It's not just, you know, painting what you see. That's a big part of it. But it's also, you know, deciding how you want the viewer to react and see this particular work of art, right? And that's, that's basically the whole thing in a nutshell. And... Let's see here. I'll just continue this. And, you know, it's like, okay, so why did I do this 1.5, uh, this particular uh, live stream? You know, why did I go ahead? Because I just want to have opportunity for, for you know, my followers, subscribers. I... And non-subscribers who are interested, just what it takes to create a painting. It's not just painting. Hey, Victor, how are you? It's great to see you, sir. So glad you're here. How's your oil painting going, Victor? I love it. I love what you're doing. And so you see I have the face, her face covered and I'm just going to make sure, remember the shape is often uh, defined more by the adjacent shape than the shape itself and that's exactly what we're doing now. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and we'll see that her face comes a little bit more forward because of the contrast right next to it. 
And sometimes you might want to make the contrast. I mean, that happens. That's something that you can do. Uh, so, and then we'll lift this up. But you see how now her face just comes forward a little bit and kind of getting me ready. So now the whole thought behind this is not only to uh, create an underpainting, but also to create an underpainting where you don't have any pencil lines, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the darkest darks of this fold here. And so the whole thing is basically to set up getting rid of the pencil lines. And why my set of Airbrush India inks are so important is because you can create an underpainting and then when you don't want the pencil lines anymore, you can erase them and still not affect the India ink. So it's the perfect underpainting for Createx paint because you're not dealing with acrylics, which is which are always going to trap the pencil lines underneath. And if you all worked on portraits or something very finely detailed the last thing you want to know want to have is that pencil line showing through right so now it's all about getting rid but notice that i'm not going to erase this pencil line just yet and the reason being is is that wet paper is before i shellac it wet paper is very very soft when it's wet so when you erase it even though you're erasing it very lightly if it's wet, it's going to get damaged. And once you damage the paper, it's just going to be an issue for the rest of the painting. So, and that's exactly, so this is going to be, so when I come in <clears throat> Wednesday night, if you uh, go to my Wednesday night live streams, you'll see that on Wednesday nights, uh, I'm going to have a more in-depth, but this is just a very short uh, tutorial, just letting you know the later stages of the underpainting and how it's important to do the underpainting with my Airbrush India inks. Again, working on those adjacent shapes, right? Okay, so now it's thoroughly dry. So I'm just going to, with this knock eraser, I'm going to go ahead and just lightly get rid of the pencil lines. Think of the pencil lines as training wheels you no longer need, right? Same thing here. We have this darker value, and I don't want to get rid of that pencil line. I still need that, that training wheel because I'm coming in with tonal value. Doing the one second rule, meaning you paint for one second and... You look for one second, you paint for one second. It's it's a ratio. If you look for three seconds, you paint for three seconds. It's going to keep your head in the game. So right here, you see we have this fold of her sleeve. And her sleeve of a coat, or yeah, uh, is coming forward. So how we bring it forward is by darkening the adjacent shape, which is the rest of her coat so I'm using my freehand shield so I get that really nice edge so that coats coming forward these are things that are going to help me in the long term uh, of the painting uh, short term I could say this is done but I'm thinking ahead like a chess player and that's what we want to do we want to think ahead like a chess player And just really creating these folds uh, not getting too in depth but in depth enough so here we have right here now it's you have the light of her lapel so to bring that light forward 
I'm going to have to darken this area. And that brings that forward a little bit, which is really what you want to do. You want to bring it forward. And let's see. And just got to answer an email. So now, oh, Willie, how are you? Great to see you, my friend. How is everything? Oh, I'm doing okay, my friend. Working hard, you know, uh, trying to uh, put my money where my mouth is or, or just like really uh, pushing, pushing it, pushing myself to take my, you know, my, my YouTube channel further and to create you know a real different way of handling the airbrush and color so one of the things willie that i'm doing now is i have my own color theory course which i'm making and it's not like anyone else's color theory it's just a totally different way and what's really cool is at any level uh someone can actually find a color and it's a five-step process and it just really goes to my way of painting you know this kind of genre so I'm excited about it and it's something that I've been exploring for airbrush artists oil painters watercolor painters alike which is very exciting so how's life over there in Massachusetts my friend And I'm almost ready. So right here, you see this kind of shoulder. I'm gonna, this fold on her shoulder. I'm going to darken it and I'm gonna let it dry. Because for me, it's so important to, so the folds really describe her form underneath. So her body underneath. And that's basically what I'm doing. And so when it's time to come in with color, which will be Wednesday night, I'm going to have such a wonderful head start and that's that's basically the whole idea is your underpainting is really your head start into color that you don't have to deal with the drawing aspects all of that is taken care of and that's that's really crucial. But as I was mentioning earlier, it's the ability to get rid of all of the all of the drawing aspects, the edge aspects. So when color comes in, you're still going to have to worry about value, right? You got your hue, saturation, and value. That's still going to be there. And that's why my, my values are lighter than they are in the final painting because as I put layers of color... It's going to get darker anyway, so it will actually fall right into the value. So that's why working with the detail mixture is so perfect for underpaintings. And Willie says, he's been so busy, it's crazy. I haven't picked up the airbrush in over a year. You'll get there. Um, just, uh, you know, when, when life gets a little bit uh, less hectic, I'm sure things will. And you always go back to your airbrush. But right here is pretty cool because, you know, I'm glad I did this little impromptu live stream because if nothing else, maybe I can give a little bit of inspiration for, you know, for you going back into the airbrush or just thinking about it, right? That's important. So my latest thing is using uh, airbrush for an underpainting for, for oil paints. And that's really exciting. 
and haven't lost the want too much. Oh, haven't lost the want too. Just do don't have much the time, and that will come, which is great. So, you know, watching this live stream will kind of stoke the flames a little bit of that, perhaps. <laughs> I hope. And so now I could go ahead and get rid of. See how the pencil lines go away, but the value stays. If I was to use some acrylic, the acrylic won't erase. Even those acrylic inks that you see, like uh, FW, uh, they're still acrylic inks. But the idea of the uh, my airbrush India the inks, they're made with just carbon and water, right? So they erase and they actually uh, do not affect the ink value. They just get rid of the pencil line, which is really wild. And so there's a lot of little pencil lines that I'm getting rid of. And all I'm going to have is this wonderful tonal framework that's just going to help me when I come in with color. And it will help you as well. Uh, when the time is right, we will have to talk about lessons. Oh, that would be amazing. And they've gotten much more streamlined, Willie. So uh, it, it's really exciting. So I know we'll do great things together. And I always work around, around you guys' schedule. Because I know how life can be busy. And, that's, and I'm glad to do that. You know, with my mentorship program. And, and, and that's it, you know, it's like really to be able to work around the busy schedule of adults, right? To, you know, be able to do the things that are, you know, really important to you, uh, important to adults, such as airbrush or oil painting or pastel. I offer all of it. And so that's one of the things I'm so happy that I can do. Because, you know, we all have to make those decisions, you know, those important decisions to pay the bills, to support families, and, and everything like that. And I think that's, that's more important than anything, but doesn't mean that we can't work together to help support the dreams that you have of becoming the best airbrush artist you can, you know, and that's, that's sort of what my classes have become and I'm just so excited that I can do that you know and so you can see how little by little we are refining now I would say three probably six hours in this underpainting but there's going to be six hours very well spent because of all of the decisions if I went in straight with color it's like juggling a juggling one tennis ball. No big deal, right? You're just juggling it. Uh, but let's say you have more tennis balls. You have the line drawing. You have the value. You have the edges. You have uh, you have bringing things forward and bring, pushing things back. And now all of a sudden you have four tennis balls, and now you draw in color, and you have saturation and you have the hue and then you've got six tennis balls going it's just not it's not practical you know if same thing you know when you're playing chess you want to set up your pieces first right you don't want to just go ahead and attack with the queen then attack with with the bishop then attack with the pawns no it has to be a coordinated attack and that's exactly what it is. This is this is like setting up your major pieces when you begin playing chess. That's exactly what this is. And so I have her likeness. Right? I don't have to find her likeness. Which is really difficult when you're doing hue, saturation, and value all at once. So that's something that... You know, you don't want to be dealing with all of that. And that's why my technique 
And my technique comes from the 19th century French academic and neoclassical painters. So it's, it's my knowledge of art history that kind of brought this about. And I love this mono eraser. So I see this little tendon she has here in her hand. Make sure that I have that really accentuated because when I come into color, I don't want to have to find that tendon in her hand. That's not, that's not the best way to go about it. So I'm looking for a semi-aggressive eraser. And I have this green one, which is really great. You can't purchase them anymore. There we go. So you see how I'm pulling out that tendon. And that's where anatomy comes in, too, because now I'm also worrying about anatomy and all these other things. So, very important. And bringing out that tendon. So, let's show you just, you know, how important it is to be dealing with these uh, different issues. There we go. So, you see these tendons? not the bone these are the tendons what's interesting is that in the hand there are no muscles in the fingers isn't that amazing it's all a pulley system with with the uh, tendons which is really great wow look at that guys I got six likes already so thank you thank you for the likes and and if you haven't um, subscribed yet this is good stuff for oil painters airbrush painters it's all about the utilization of underpaintings, which is really crucial. So we will definitely work on that. Uh, you know, definitely it's important to know why the underpainting and how much you need to put in the underpainting. All those things are so important. But you see here we have our anatomy. And now I could just like right here in her finger. That finger is going to come forward, her ring finger, by the adjacent shape of her ring finger. So this is a middle finger, adjacent shape of the ring finger. We're going to let that dry and then I can get rid of that pencil line. Less things that are going to be trapped underneath the Createx uh, Wicked paint. So, it's very exciting. Now, I've been painting since I was 14 years old. Uh, painting, uh, formerly being trained since 15. But, and I could pretty much at this end, you know, pretty much paint, uh, paint color in an intuitive kind of way, but that is not effective to those who are trying to learn color. So that's why I'm coming out with a color theory that someone can come from, come from step one and start nailing the colors, like color of water, the color of steam, the color of sky, the color of candles, all these different things. One thing I did find out, so if you're painting a candle with the candlelight, you're going to be surprised that there's cerulean blue or a little bit of cobalt blue in that. Or the dark of a hair. Like the dark of a hair, it looks black, but it really has magenta in it. So those are the things that we're going to be touching on, which is very, very exciting. Right here, there's a light right on the top part of her lapel here. See how I can accentuate that. This light here just to indicate that this is all very high level stuff but breaking it down in a way that this is going to help your painting right away and your drawing so no matter what level you're at you know the underpainting and you know watching my live stream on the underpainting is really going to help out help you so you see how the lapel is, I'm going to uh, zoom in on her lapel. And you can see that the lapel itself is not as important 
as the value next to that lapel. So if I want to bring that lapel forward, I'm going to use a freehand shield, and I'm just going to go, see how I just pull that up? And then here, uh, as that fold is coming up, if I want to bring that forward from that fold, I'll just put my freehand. Cover what you don't want to spray. And you see how I brought that lapel forward. And we still got some pencil lines to get rid of. And now I want to bring the light of that lapel forward. So I'm just going to do the little bit of the fold of the lapel right here. And then right here, we have the, the, the dark of the lapel. And what a great beginning, right? A great head start that a lot of the edge work is already taken care of, which is really fantastic. So like I said, every Wednesday night, I have a live stream. I also am doing a series on oil painting for airbrush artists, which is very exciting. And I do some impromptu uh, videos that have to do with tech issues for airbrush artists and painters alike. Uh, painters of all mediums. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead. And uh, so you'll be alerted when I do these kind of impromptu live streams. See how I'm bringing this fold forward. And as you go back, there you go. So you see how it looks like it's done, but there's still some things that I could actually prepare better. So remember that, that uh, ring finger. So now I'm just going to lightly erase that pencil line so it doesn't get in the way. And that's where the India ink. So when I erase that pencil line, it's not, it's not being trapped underneath the airbrush India ink. So my Airbrush India ink set is the link in the description. And I believe it's only $19.99 for a full set. I just made a hundred sets. So they'll be shipped out right away if you do purchase them. Uh, if you're an airbrush artist and you've been exploring underpaintings, this is definitely something that when you do try it, it's going to uh, really blow up. Oh, yes, I did hear from Wendy. Uh, not too long ago, I believe during the holidays, and I and she's doing well, so I'll definitely relay that. Uh, I haven't seen her on the live streams lately, but I know she's very busy, and she's really, like yourself, wanting to get back into airbrush, so that's pretty cool. So Wendy, if you're out there, a lot of people miss you, and uh, she's always a great member of the community. And so here we have her, her masseter right here, or the jawbone coming down. So you see how I just erase a little bit and really bring the, because she has our model here. She has, you know, a very pronounced masseter, very elegant and high zygomatic bone or cheekbone, right? Very striking. So you see how I'm able to get such a, a really good head start uh, on a lot of things. So I got rid of the pencil lines. Now I'm going to zoom in on the kind of wrinkles on her knuckle. How are we going to handle that so we don't have to deal with pencil lines? So this is where control comes in. So in the airbrush, I have the detail mixture. And that is uh, diluted one to one. So it's really super, super light. So, and see how I just kind of accentuate some of the wrinkles in her hand. And 
in the little webbing that we all have. And always with the one second rule, you're never exempt from the one second rule. Never. And I'm just going to make sure that my reference is right here. Pull that up. Now, it's important to do full-on black and white airbrush paintings with, with the Airbrush India ink as well, just to really work out your ability to get value. But also, it's a wonderful way to practice, so when you're using this as an underpainting, you're just cooking on all cylinders, right? Which is really great. So the Airbrush India inks are really fantastic. So, you know, if you haven't tried them, many of you have and are very excited. And, and I see you using them for your full-on Airbrush India ink paintings and also using it for underpaintings in pastel, in oils, with working with Createx. It really is taking things to the... Hey, Ryan, how's it going, my friend? Great to see you. And thank you so much for this particular uh, uh, pencil eraser that you sent me. It really works in this painting perfectly. Hey, Patty. So, so cool. We have Patty and Ryan here. So glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for hanging out on this uh, Monday afternoon. It's 221 here in, in the Northeast. And I know Ryan and... And Patty, our central time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like 122 by you guys. Is that correct? So bringing that now, I could take a real super soft eraser. Uh, 122 by Patty. Cool. Central time. That's it's always so cool that we have different time zones. Kind of makes it where we live from each other just so much more foreign right and in california it's like what is it like 11 well oh ryan's at the edge of eastern time okay cool he's in uh, the detroit area and that's really neat um so in california you have so it's 1 12 to 11 22 in uh, california peeps and I know Mr. Willie is on the East Coast with me. Hey, Philip, how's it going? How's everything? So 11.22 Canadian time, is that correct? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, ciao, Carlo, how are you? Great to see you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Your work takes you away a lot and no longer have time to use airbrush. I'm doing okay, my friend. Keep working. I'm um, keep working hard like you are and you know you're you're doing great things in your business so I see that oh California time for Philip 1122 very cool oh wow so I'm so glad so Carlo is all the way from from Italy so you know I'm so glad Carlo is a really great airbrush artist uh, just really love working with him uh, so glad to see you, Philip. Philip does some great work, and uh, everyone here just does great work. So I'm so honored that you're all here. Uh, oh, so Ryan says Phil has taken a Drew class together. Oh, that is so cool. It is, right, Willie, that it's 1130 in California, like worlds collide, right? And while you're in California, you're like, wow, it's so it's so late over there in California. I visited California several times. And it just blew my mind. You know, the difference in, like, when I called, uh, you know, my family. And it was, like, 9 o'clock. And I called them at, like, 6 in the morning, not knowing, remembering. Yes, definitely. Carlo, we, we have to make that money to take care of business. And you're doing that. So I admire you. Uh, so that is great. Uh, so very cool. So, so Phil, uh, Philip does some great work and what a great teacher. Anyone 
who had uh, the blessing to work with Drew Blair, I know is just, you know, a much better artist because of it. I mean, he, Drew Blair is an inspiration for me in my teaching and uh, in my art. And uh, one of the nicest guys in Airbrush. So if anyone ever gets a chance to study with Drew, I would say that's probably, that is money, probably one of the best, best uses of money to go to his course down there. And now he uses them online, which is fantastic. Uh, Philip says he is. He has to step out for about uh, 45 minutes. Ah, oh, take care, my friend. Philip, always a pleasure. I'm so glad you're here. And, uh, you know, don't work too hard, my friend. That's so important to, uh, you know, just make sure you, we get our rest, right? Uh, we can't get that day back, but I know when we have work, we have to do what we have to do. So you see how I'm kind of getting rid of all the pencil lines. And I'm actually going to get rid of the pencil lines here in the kind of characteristics of the white birch. I love white birch trees. So that's, I love painting the female form. I love white birch I love the winter so this painting is really important to me on a lot of levels and notice I'm just getting rid of the pencil lines without having to get rid of the value so it's not it's not hurting the India ink at all now if I went in aggressive with this I could erase the India ink right and that's what's great about the India ink see how I was able to do that very cool so for underpaintings, this is probably, you know, for me, and, you know, this is what I do for every one of my paintings, so I would definitely say that this would be the best underpainting medium uh, because of the fact is that you don't have to, uh, you don't have to worry about your lines, your pencil lines being trapped underneath. So let's say I erase and I forgot to go over it with the ink. So before I fully erase it, I can just come in with my airbrush India ink. And on this, I'm really low. So I start out with 25 PSI and then I choke it down with the, with the Mac valve. So the ultimate control. Carlo says, anyway, I see your post. You're great. I love your color work. Thank you, Carlo. When, when you're ready, we'll do some color painting together. Cause I know uh, me and me and Carlo actually done some really great black and white. So, so I know we're gonna do some great color paintings together when you have time. And I'll be here, God willing, my friend. And so see how I I went there. So right here we have this lighter area and I'm just going to it's not going to be as dark as that and I'm pretty close I would say uh, maybe like an inch and a half away from the surface So I wanted to do this paint this live stream because this is me preparing before I go over it with that one coat of shellac. That one beautiful coat of shellac is just going to enable me to have, uh, you know, have a beautiful slick surface to paint on, where I could really not worry about texture of the paper, which is great. But the India ink will soak into the paper and when I go over it with the shellac, the India ink and everything will not affect the oils, but I mean the uh, Createx. But that wouldn't be the case because this is waterproof. But how it does, does help is that I can't, if I do any erasing, I won't erase my underpainting. So my underpainting is the steel girders and the structure. 
so I won't lose that once I shellac over it. And Carlos says, remember that we have to take the course on colors. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue doing, this is sort of my, my closing, my closing notes on the underpainting before I'm ready. But notice I'm not doing like anything like individual stray hairs or eyelashes at this point. That we'll do later when we come in with the create text. And I like doing a little bit more than is expected of me when it comes to live streams and videos. I, I want to spoil you all, all the airbrush artists out there with the knowledge and the fact is I'm always working. I'm always pushing myself and I find out new things and I definitely want to take those new things and share them with you all, you guys and girls out there. Uh, now as far as the sweater, there's a lot of like, this is like a wool sweater. So I'm probably gonna wait until I get in with Createx to actually go ahead and define that. But notice here, these dark trees in the background. I'm just going to push that. See, because then you can really feel the dark of those trees in the background. So I really want it to feel very cold, uh, like a cold winter, winter environment. It's very important. Uh, that's true. I don't usually go live during the day and I'm just like pushing myself to give more and to take things to the next level. And Ryan says, do I ever use texture stencils or not really? I love the texture stencils that Drew makes and I highly recommend. I love what uh, Mr. Uh, Gerald Mendez they have. Sometimes I have used them, but you know, I kind of steer away from them uh, just for my own personal thing. You know, uh, I always like the challenge of kind of making those those textures myself. But I'm always pushing myself. But definitely, texture stencils are amazing. And I love the texture stencils that are out there, which is really great. Uh, it's just... Oh, right here, maybe hit some of these. What's really interesting, when you're going at, you know, when you're working with very thin, thin detail mixture, I just put 12 drops in here, and I've been working for an hour. So it's amazing when you're working at low pressure and you're working on an underpainting such as this, 12 drops is going to last you almost your whole painting session. So right here in the corner, there's some pencil lines, and I'll show you really quickly inside her, her sleeve here, and we'll just erase this. And just, and you see now we have no pencil lines, and they're not trapped under it. I can basically take care of it. Uh, it just makes for a cleaner painting and color experience without having to worry about any pencil lines. But I didn't lose any detail, especially in... Uh, oh, thanks, Ryan. Ryan says everyone's got their own ways. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, we all have our own ways of doing things, for better or for worse might be easier for me to work on those texture stencils. But I guess it's just like, you know, my training, you know, back in the day. Okay, so now what I can do is maybe do a little bit of the dark of that sleeve. But 
nothing too crazy. But most of this is going to be when I come in with color. It'll be a lot easier to... And also, like, when it comes to things like little details like this, I tend to kind of abbreviate the detail because it's not important. Her face is the most important thing to me. So I'm always thinking like, like a director, you know, where I want the camera to be. And the camera, to me, is where the, the viewer, right, the end viewer of where I direct the eye. And that's strictly a 19th century way of painting, you know, especially like uh, with the Impressionists, you know, like Manet, who is, me, he's an Impressionist, but he's a little more of a traditional painter than an Impressionist, but Edgar Degas, like, I consider them the pre-Impressionists because they were older and they basically influenced people like Claude Monet and Auguste Renoir, Paul Cezanne, you know. So I consider Degas and Manet pre, pre-impressionist, which I think I'm the only one that's coining that phrase. So for me, it's all about directing the eye, you know, and that's what this is all about. And as I'm working, I can definitely see that it's a little darker on the bottom part of her sleeve. But you see how I can kind of get these little subtle value shifts? And this way, when I'm coming in color, because it's hot enough, you got to find the hue, which is the actual color, then how saturated it is. But then if I have kind of clues of the value, it's going to make things go a lot smoother for me. And that's the whole thing. It's all about, you know, making it a lot smoother. Less could go wrong when you've already, you know, taken care of a lot of the aspects of value and edge work, stuff like that. So great, we have eight concurrent viewers right now, so I love it when a plan works out, you know, well, almost not like a plan, but a lot of people are enjoying this live stream, I hope, and also notice how soft edge I'm making the back lapel, and that's going to go a long way, I'll show you, because we want to have that feeling of, you know, when that, whatever is blurry is going to go back in space. So you see how I left that blurry? And then here's a good opportunity for me to kind of get rid of the pencil lines associated with the original drawing of the pomegranate. I mean, I could probably paint this... Uh, I can probably work on this another... <laughs> six seven hours but it got to get to a point where the underpainting where you just want to you know remember it's not a finished work of art it's a it's to help you uh with the decisions when you come in with color that's basically it and ryan says oh cool i got the stuff from drew's deliver oh nice so the new stencils right that's great oh that's really cool so let me know how that comes out. I think uh, Ryan is working on Drew's uh, reptile uh, paint, like the, what is it? Uh, Lesson in the box or something like that. They're really great. So I'm excited to see what how that comes out. I know it's going to come out great. And so you can see, like, now as I move around, I can... Now, when you're doing the underpaintings, you want to make sure you don't get to the, the value that you're looking for. So, because, like, especially in the lips, if I make her lips too dark, that means I have to lighten them when I come in with the red color of her lips, right? For instance, 
because the gray is going to kill a translucency and darken the values. So I have to make sure that I don't get those values too dark. Oh, the stencils are in here, but got the Art Nouveau. Oh, nice. That is fantastic. Oh, you know, if you have a Hobby Lobby by you, you can have it uh, have it framed for a very little money. So we'll touch base on that. Especially something like like the art print. Uh, it's her standard size. So you can get that with a frame and a mat for like, you know, when it's on sale, the, the frames. And they cut the mat for you for really inexpensive. So definitely. So that's going to look great. So, uh, so uh, Ryan purchased the uh, painting of, of Drew Blair in print form, so that's really great. So you see, now, the thing is, I need the tree to come forward from the light of the snow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up this, uh, the snow in the background. And I'm going to be doing my one second rule. And see how I'm darkening that edge to bring that tree forward so important otherwise it will just kind of blend in with the background and that's not effective at all the india inks as you can see i'm going to zoom in you can see i've been working quite a bit and there's very little tip dry i mean if there is you can see there's hardly anything even if i go here there's real no tip dry because of the fact that it's uh, very watery and uh, there's no like acrylic or anything in there. So really takes a while, especially with the detail mixture for that to actually have tip dry. So if you're just starting out with airbrush and you want to learn about about control and, you know, air pressure and stuff like that. I believe the Airbrush India Inks is going to be a godsend for you. Definitely. Uh, so you see how the tree is not coming forward enough, right? And Patty says they are running a 40% off through the store. Really? Of the, of, the, uh, of the frames right now. Thanks, Patty. So Patty's also a fan of Hobby Lobby. That is, I really, I really do love that, that store. Plus they, they have 40% off for you oil painters out there. Even when you do brush work with your airbrush, you get uh, like 40% off of their paintbrushes. And they're really good. They're good quality. Like these, 40% off of uh, these brushes here. Uh, some really nice detail. So this one was normally $6 and I got it for like $1.50. This one right here. Uh, so yeah, so definitely take, take advantage of those sales, right? Uh, well, uh, we're not, we're not cheap. We're just frugal, right? <laughs> I like that better, Patty. And Willie says the inks are awesome. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so the and thank you, Willie, for that uh, wonderful testimony. Willie's been working with the inks for years, and you know I'm so honored that you guys and girls use them because they really, uh, really help to just get us in shape. Am I running out of ink? So, so think about that. So for an hour and a half, I worked with six drops of detail mix. 
So they last forever. And as you go darker, so let's say this was going to be a full-on black and white painting in India inks. I have the light mixture, the medium mixture, and the dark mixture to get fully uh, resolved. So I'm putting four, six drops of my airbrush India ink and four drops of water. I also found that you could actually put, uh, but this is water. One, two, three, four, five. You know what really makes them float really nice is the 4011 reducer. If you ever work with them, try that. It's a little bit different, but it just seems like it just flows even better with the 4011. The end of a paintbrush, I'm just going to uh, mix that. And okay, so now we can go ahead and kind of bring this. We want this tree to come forward from the background. So we want the winterscape and all the snow and a little debris. We want that to come forward. And that's what's important to be that director. Think about yourself as a movie director, right? You know, where do you want the, how do you want the narration to go, right? So that's very important. So Steve Leahy's live streams today at 6 on Facebook. Check that out. And then we have uh, Mr. Bill Snagan's live stream tomorrow, I believe, at 7. So that's exciting. I always try and check that out. Scott McKay, Thursday uh, at 8. My main live stream is Wednesday at 9.30. All times are Eastern. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. See how I'm even darkening that tree a little bit more than it is to make sure that tree comes forward. And a lot of times, I always say it, that the adjacent shape often describes the shape more than the shape itself. So I want to bring this part of the tree forward, but I have darkness in the background, so I may darken this just a little bit more to get that shape of the tree and bring that forward. So cover up what you don't want to spray and see how I'm bringing the shape of that tree forward now. So if I want to describe the tree, sometimes I have to darken the tree, but sometimes all I have to do is darken the background or the adjacent shape. See now I have that nice beautiful contour as it comes down and then over here I could darken the, the knot on this. I really love the white birch trees. So let me know uh, out there, is the, do you guys have, uh, guys and girls, have any white birch trees near your house? I think white birch is probably the most beautiful tree uh, in the woods. So see as I darken this knot here, see how it comes forward. You're the director. You're deciding where the eyes go of the viewer. So right now we're just worrying about contour, value, edges. When we come into color, we're worrying about hue and saturation and and also the value of that the, the value uh, of that particular color however we're going to have the uh, underpainting in mind so we'll be 
using a lot more transparency than just going over it because if you go over it with a opaque in some areas I can say yeah it's fine but if you go over it opaque then you lose all this wonderful work that we did so those are things to consider so you know it's it's a little bit different way of painting but I feel that the advantages for those who like to paint that way who like to be more pragmatic I think is important and I just love now I can see this tree coming forward and you know then the background we have a little twig here I'm just gonna indicate it for when we come in with color starting on Wednesday so after this live streams over I am going to after this live stream is over I'm going to shellac it and let it dry and and then when we come back on Wednesday we're we're gonna start going over in color so if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button it's gonna be Wednesday at 930 Eastern Time Patty says not me but I love them I had a friend send me a bark and got to an illuminated page it was the medieval workshop even made my own pigments wow that's so cool i do love the uh uh the white birch right so 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 sent you a bark of white birch and got to do an illuminated page wow that's amazing it was for a medieval workshop oh man i would love to see that if you get a chance that sounds great i really really love Patty's work. He does these amazing uh, paintings of miniatures and uh, just great. And you also make um, your own Christmas ornaments, which I thought was amazing. Very talented and creative. So right here we have the white of the white birch right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just not only can you erase the pencil lines, but you can erase the actual airbrush India ink to a certain extent. Another reason why I like doing these like impromptu is because a lot of times at the 930 mark in the evening uh, in the UK in Europe that's like like three in the morning <laughs> so this is a good way for you know other other audience and community members to catch catch the live stream you know when it's up and running. And Patty says, oh, thank you. You're one of the few artists who inspire me. Oh, thank you, Patty. You inspire me right back at you. Uh, always inspired by your work and the way you see things. And so now this is where uh, I'm going to show you how the Airbrush India inks actually you can erase with them. And this is on paper, mind you. Look how beautiful that erases so you're not losing much or anything by using these it just just opens up a lot of the precision so you don't have to worry about value and edge work when you go in with color so right here we still have the pencil line let me show you I can get rid of this pencil line and now we just have the tree and so right here I'm just gonna very lightly erase the pencil line Let's 
just a very cleaner way of working. And then we'll zoom out. And you can see it's all about cleanliness. And, you know, I did a lot of work of the likeness later, earlier. And now we're able to uh, basically uh, just set up for the next stage. And we do have some, some texture here. I'll get rid of this right over here. We don't need that. That's something that I can worry about. Maybe a texture stencil would be a great idea for the bark, right? I mean, because we'll get much more organic feel to it. So that's something I'm thinking about. So Ryan, if you're still out there, what would be a good texture stencil for bark? Like this, this part in here. And so we're at 2.56, so I'm just going to end it at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And so thank you everybody for hanging out, and I appreciate it. And so cool, we have 8 likes, isn't that great? So... Uh, thank you so much for the the kind encouragement of hitting the like button. That always makes me feel good. You don't want to have that pencil line trapped. You just want straight paint. And so when I get rid of the pencil lines, I don't have to worry anymore about, you know, working transparent. I can work as transparent I want and not be penalized with having pencil lines showing underneath, right? And, ah, oh, thanks, Patty. You have a wonderful day. I hope to see you on Wednesday. And keep doing uh, the wonderful creativity you are doing. Don't work too hard. And it's always such a pleasure to see you on the live streams and your wonderful posts on Facebook. I always love uh, keeping up with all your latest creations, Patty. And so there is some, some things going on in the upper right-hand corner here. So maybe I could close out by hitting some of them here. Sort of a very out-of-focus tree branch going up here like that. Very out-of-focus. And then there's just some very nondescript detail, just like there's stuff going on. Ah, oh, thank you. Have a great day, Patty. Definitely. So we're at 2.58. I'm going to paint until 3 Eastern Time. And then I'm going to make some more inks and send them out. I already have a hundred bottles made, but my goal is to sell 200. And I'm happy because I know it's, it's going to be, everyone's going to really enjoy them. And notice I didn't do any real tight detail, you know, such as eyelashes or anything. I did go a little bit detailed in the hair because... You know, she has, you know, a very nice hairstyle, and so I want to definitely get the intricacy of how her hair is kind of overlapping with each other, kind of a feathered look, you know, so I definitely want to get that. So I'm a little bit more detailed in the hair at this point. But yes, yeah, so now this is going to, she's going to be shellac, get rid of some pencil lines, I'll shellac her, and then once she's shellac, she'll be ready and totally dry for the Createx Wicked Paint on Wednesday night. So Wednesday at 9.30, be sure to come and hang out and say hello, you know. 
So it is 3 o'clock. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this Wednesday afternoon. Don't forget to subscribe because I may do some impromptu live streams and you'll be alerted and you can come and ask questions. And I can do everything from airbrush to oil painting to you, you name it. So a lot to learn. So take care, everybody. Always a pleasure. And I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. Well, it's only Monday, but an amazing rest of the week. Take care.